Okay, I'd like to call this uh, Urbana City Council meeting to order. It's Monday, October 19. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alder Persons Bowersox? Here. Garrig? Here. Lewis? Marlin? Here. Roberts? I'm here. Smythe? Here. Stevenson? Present. Mayor Pressing? Okay, first up, uh, minutes of October 5th. So Houston. moved. It's been moved and seconded by Heather and David. Is uh, there any discussion? I see any Seeing none, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, minutes are approved. Are there any additions to the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on. Petitions and communications. Is there anybody here to speak to the City Council tonight? Seeing none, we'll move on. Old business? Uh, none? Okay, uh, reports of standing committees. Oh. Brandon? Okay, yeah. The Committee of the Whole met last week. It was chaired by Charlie Smythe, but um, since he's chairing this tonight, I'll be reporting back the five items that the committee set here with recommendations to approve each of them. First, we have Resolution 2009-10-032R. This is a resolution determining the amounts of money necessary to be raised by the tax levy for 2009. And for the committee, I move approval. Uh, moved by Brandon, seconded by David. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next. Next is Resolution 2009-10-033R. This is a resolution deeming certain funds in the Special Tax Allocation Fund for the Downtown Urbana TIF uh, Redevelopment Project Area as surplus and directing the payment and distribution thereof. I move approval. I second that. Moved by Brandon, seconded by Dennis Roberts. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next. Next we have an ordinance, number 2009-10-113. This is an ordinance to immobilize and impound vehicles with unpaid park parking fines, sometimes called booting. And I think we have Delora Siebrecht here to tell us a little more about the program. Um, I guess I could go ahead and make the motion for approval. The committee sent it with a recommendation, so I move approval. Second. Uh, moved by Brandon, seconded by Diane. Um, Delora, do you have anything to add? Yes. Well, last week uh, there were questions, and I, I emailed everyone um, the answers to the – there was uh, several questions, so I emailed them all out to you. I don't know if you have any further questions from the information I gave you on – how, the, how it's going to work whenever we boot somebody, what Champagne does, what U of I does. Brenda. Yeah, the, it all looked good to me. I guess my one suggestion is just as you go through putting together this wording and getting it on tickets to um, kind of explain it in order of severity to people. Like, first off, well, if you pay your fine, it's $5. But if it's unpaid after 72 hours, then it's $10. And then if you get a second or a third fine, I don't know whether we're going to escalate. But if we are, that we would escalate the fines. Um, and then by the time you get to your fourth or fifth, it's you could be subject to um, to the immobilization. And then I guess when you get to 10, subject to us revoking your license. So kind of putting it in order of severity so that people see that they're better off complying early. And the farther they take it, the, um, the worse it could get for them. The, the amount of notice, I think, was very good and made sense to people. I think spelling it out in a really put it in order of severity kind of the, the steps it's going to go in with your first ticket and your first ticket that's late and your second and third and then fifth and then tenth, just spell the whole picture out for people so they can see that, you know, that if they don't comply, things are going to get worse. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Dennis. Yeah. Um, thank you for rewriting it and making it a little more clear to us. Um, the, the one thing that wasn't really, I thought, really well defined was that if to include in the information on the ticket that there would be a boot fee. And I understand okay. the boot fee itself wasn't really mentioned. We know that they're going to be paying for arrears parking tickets, but I think the fact that there's going to be a $50 boot fee should be on that notice as well. I can include that on there. Thanks, sir. It's very good. Further discussion? Diane. I had a question. 
the, the vehicles that currently have between five and nine um, unpaid parking tickets, will they get mailed a notice immediately saying their cars will be booted immediately? Well, we spoke about putting uh, the next ticket they got, putting the notice inside the ticket that, uh, you know, one more ticket and they were going to get booted. We could very well do that for those vehicles that already have that between that five and nine tickets. We could include that notice when the next time we ticket them and then the next time they get the so they have to be ticketed again before they get a notice that they'll be booted. Is that what well, you're unless, saying? Well, unless we can, of course, what's going to happen is whenever you put in that license plate number, it's going to tell you that that vehicle has reached the port where they can be booted. We could also uh, just randomly do license plate numbers or search for that vehicle if, and put a notice on the car and let them know that, you know, their vehicle is, has enough tickets to, that they would get the boot. But we have... We can re-notice vehicles, and when we have this new notice layout that we're going to have, which, you know, points out the severity and the boot fee and everything, we can re-notice vehicles that have that amount of tickets so that they know that that is out there now and, and the additional fees that are incurred. It might be a good idea. Okay. Ron. I might also add that this ordinance also creates the fact that this is going to be created in pamphlet form to so I just wanted to let you know that there will be some further notice going out to the public about this new ordinance to make citizenry aware Brendan yeah and on that question actually Delora I remember us saying last week this goes into effect immediately if it's passed tonight but obviously you wouldn't you know start people wouldn't be booted tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. obviously there's some some sort of notice and ramp up of the process and actually purchasing the equipment and training and everything. Um, are there other ways that we can, on a UPTV ad or in the neighborhood news that goes out or something, just other ways we can start to get the word out that the city does have the program so that nobody's surprised, it won't be tomorrow, but when that day comes, so that nobody's surprised that Urbana's enacted the program. I guess any of the free methods we have, like UPTV and things, I'd encourage you to right. use. We have UPTV and we can there's always notices to put in the Daily Aligner or the News Gazette, um, yeah. and we have different, we put posters out here and there, and, and so yes, and it, would, it will be probably at least a couple months before we would really be ready to do this anyway. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Robert. I had a question for legal. Is there any issues out here with regard to when you change the law and you have people that like uh, it's like putting a stop sign up after they pass through it, you know what I mean? I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understand your question. For example, we're saying that those folks that are have five to nine, they will be <coughs> potentially booted after the next notice. Mm -hmm. um, that's fair, right? I mean, yes. As far as the law is concerned. Yes. Okay. I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I have to start from the premise that they already owe the tickets I anyway. Understand. When we can pass a law that says, or an ordinance in, in this instance that says that we, you can be booted, and even though they've already gotten their tickets, we're not, this is not a, a punishment. You know, this is not a, a, a penal thing, and this is not something that is um, creating, um, it's not an ex post facto situation. Okay. You, 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 you already owe the money. You're already guilty of the crime. You already owe the money, and this is just saying pay the money. If you don't, then we're. It would be no different from us using a collection agency to go after them and say, give us the money. Thanks. Dennis, um, I guess I wanted to ask um, some practical um, questions about instigating or beginning the process. Um, Brandon was just saying that that uh, the. If we passed it today, the, the ordinance would become law today or whenever it was signed by the mayor or the mayor pro tem. But um, in, in actuality, do we have the boots? And it, it would seem right that we would give at least a 30-day notice before, before starting this program. So it seems like you were suggesting it might be a couple months before we could actually um, truly physically begin this program. And I, I'm just wondering if we should say that this, if we, part of the uh, resolution or the ordinance would be um, uh, saying, you know, the date that this will begin will be initiated in our city, and it might be January 1st or December 1st. And I'm wondering how that plays out. 
Well, that would play out. I would say you could say 30 days from the time it was signed. The equipment has to be ordered. I don't know how fast things can get delivered there, but we have to do some little different programming with our notices now to get the wording that you want on there. We have to order some forms that get the forms that get stuck on the windshield or the driver's side, you know, to make sure that they don't try and move the boot. So there's a number of things we have to do. You know, we could maybe have it ready to go in 30 days, but surely in 60 days it would be ready to go. Okay. Maybe the council should make that statement, too, when we pass this, that, you know, fair warning, 60 days, this will be initiated. I mean, I'd make the motion to add that to the wording of the document. Well, do you want to just, like, pick a date, like December 1 or something? Yes, December 1st. So, Ron, where would we stick that? Just in time for Christmas. Okay. I think that's fair to the public. Okay, so there's a motion to amend. Is there a second? It's been moved and seconded to add a December 1st effective date, and I assume that will generate lots of publicity. And after that, anybody with more than five tickets is fair game. So is there any further discussion on the second, on the amendment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, that passes. Okay, is there any further discussion of the main motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Bowersox? Yes. Mr. Garrett? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. Marlin? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Smyth? Yes. Ms. Stevenson? No. Motion passes, or the ordinance passes. Next, item D. We have resolution number 2009-10-034R. This is a resolution granting Comcast of Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, LLC, a franchise extension through January 1st of 2010. And for the committee, I move approval. Second. Moved by Brandon, seconded by David. Is there any further discussion of this? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? That passes. Finally, we sent ordinance number 2009-10-114. This is an ordinance annexing certain territory to the city of Urbana. This is territory that's southeast of Perkins Road, adjacent to the Landscape Recycling Center. For the committee, I move approval. Second. Moved by Brandon, seconded by Robert Lewis. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Bowerson? Yes. Mr. Garrett? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. Marlin? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. And that passes. Are there any reports of special committees? Thanks, Brandon. Thank you. Reports of officers. Anything? Seeing none, new business. We have one motion, or we have one item. Oh, I have a couple items, I'm sorry. A motion to allow sanitary sewer connection for 1913 Brownfield Road under the urgency provisions of resolution number 9394R13. Robert. This is a request for a motion directing staff, city staff, to authorize the Urbana-Champaign Sanitary District to connect 1913 Brownfield Road to the sanitary sewer system without yet an annexation agreement at hand because of an urgent situation where the septic system has failed and there are a family living at this address. Just to let you know, the property owners are amenable to signing an annexation agreement. In fact, we have a draft agreement that they've already signed for follow-up. So if this happened, the next step would be that they would connect a sanitary sewer, then we would come forward with an annexation agreement for future annexation. Is there a motion? Second. It's been moved by Brandon, seconded by Robert Lewis. Is there any further discussion? Heather. I read or I saw in the news there were two homes that had problems with sewage coming back into their home, said that 
something about the city being willing to cover um, damages or claims um, up to a reasonable point. Will we see any of that, or is that something that's just in the finance in the budget? I haven't. Um, well, first of all, I understand that in this particular case, they have had um, their septic system has failed such that the sewer is backing up. But I haven't heard anything whatsoever about any claims, any agreements for um, reimbursements or anything to that effect. It's the private septic system now, so if it's backed up, the private, uh, the property owner owns it, and it requires uh, periodic maintenance. And septic tanks do fail uh, um, at some point. They don't have a indefinite life span. Right, and well, I understand that. that. That wasn't really my question. So just since we were on the subject mm -hmm. of sewer backup, uh, backup um, it, it brought to mind those two other issues, those two other homes um, I th I that think, are, I think, are a separate issue. Yeah, I think I Bill can, Bill Gray, the director of public works, can address what, this. What we as a city might see. Um, I guess the short answer to the East Michigan Street sewer backup is that they are claims and they're being handled by the city comptroller as a claim okay. for reimbursement of so some sort. So we won't ever see any. I'm sorry? Will we, we probably won't see that, or we will. We, the city council? Yeah. No, it's okay. typically handled administratively okay. Okay. with our insurance company provider. Okay. I was just curious, just based on this other issue, just kind of what we see and what we don't see when it comes to those kind of issues. Okay. I was just curious. Question. Robert. So, do, do we have a requirement for backflow valves in our septic, I mean, our lines and stuff? For example, the homes have to be in, have to be a, um, so that they can't have sewer backup, they have to have some kind of check valve or something. Is there anything like that in our codes? <clears throat> for all new construction, if you have uh, below grade, uh, plumbing fixtures, uh, all new construction requires an ejector overhead sewer system. Okay. So for new homes constructed over the last many years, um, those devices are installed and they prevent sewage from surcharging back into a home. For uh, homes that predate that requirement, we have materials, handout materials that would provide homeowners as to how they can protect their residents okay. from a sewer backup. and the best protection to be provided is to install an overhead or ejector sewer system in the lower level of the home. And the city council passed a policy maybe pushing 10 years ago now where we will reimburse up to 75, we will reimburse 75 percent of the total cost not to exceed $3,700 of the city's. And to date, We've had at least 40 people partake in that program. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Seeing none. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Robert. Uh, let's see. This, uh, does this motion take a vote, uh, a roll call vote, or a, a voice, uh, vote. voice vote? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The resolution passes. The last item is mayoral appointments, uh, Building Safety Code Board of Appeals, David Crow, Neighborhood Safety Task Force, the winner represented. Oh. 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 oh, sorry. Oh, I didn't see that. I put on my desk here. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, let's finish the mayoral appointments. How's that, since I've read them out? <laughs> Neighborhood Safety Task Force, winner representative, Jane Kerber. Second. Moved by. Heather. Heather. Seconded by uh, Robert Lewis. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, those are approved. Okay. Item number two, sorry. Or ordinance number 2009-10-115, an ordinance revising the annual budget, budget ordinance, uh, consulting fees for the big broadband project. Did, did you want to take Sure, this is uh, to hire a CCG consulting out of Beltsville, Maryland. They're going to take a hard look at the... Uh, uh, the grant application, uh, come up with some business plans. Uh, we're splitting the cost with the city of Champaign. We're each going to pay 7500 which is a very good price. Um, 
I look at as a, a good insurance policy to make sure that the grant only model the uh, the fiber of the home to uh, the underserved neighborhoods that to make sure that that pays for itself. It's going to take a very close look at that. We'll also get a um, a detailed cost estimate of how much it would cost to fully wire the city. Uh, it'll we'll get some different business models that we could use when we do fully build out, including you know retail where the city is a provider of triple play, uh, open access, which is a completely different model. We'll also look at like a city only business model or whether we'd want to do a joint utility with the city of Champaign. So I, I think it'll be very helpful, and it should be completed in about four or five weeks. Discussion. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Robert. Second by Diane. Discussion. Well, See. I'll just say that we're going to need this because to make an, a, an astute um, decision, we're going to have to have some backup information about costs. So this is really a wise thing to do. Any other discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Bowersox. Yes. Mr. Garrett? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. Marlin? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. That motion carries. Is there any other business? Seeing none, uh, this meeting is adjourned.